Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorial. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. These workshops and exercises are published to our website, aws-dojo.com. Today, we are going to talk about how you can call an API deployed in API Gateway from AWS Web Functions. This is a new feature which was recently announced by AWS. So just to give you an introduction about these two services, AWS API Gateway provides an scalable and managed way to configure APIs, whether it's an uh, REST API or you want to create some kind of HTTP API or, um, or a duplex API, uh, you can create uh, such API and deploy uh, using uh, Amazon API Gateway. Uh, on the other hand, AWS Web Function is a service which can be used to create a um, state machine workflow. That means you can create a state machine workflow where you can call various AWS services, uh, orchestrate various AWS services to implement some business problem. So that was a quick introduction to these two services, but uh, today I really want to focus how you can call an API gateway based API from a state machine workflow created inside AWS Web Functions. So moving on. This was a new service uh, which was uh, actually um, launched by AWS a couple of weeks back. Uh, and um, uh, actually it provides a task state in step function and using the task, task state actually you can configure your REST or HTTP API in API Gateway uh, to call them uh, and um, yeah, and without writing even a single line of code. And it also allows you to uh, configure a different type of authorization uh, between uh, your um, between your step function and API Gateway because in, in this case your step function is kind of a client client uh, client uh, body which is going to make call to API Gateway. And um, API Gateway, uh, I mean, there's a certain way you can configure uh, authorization between your step function uh, state machine workflow and uh, API in the API Gateway. So let's take this. This is a very small topic, so I'm not going to take much time. So if we go further down, this is how the task configuration uh, look like if you're trying to call uh, an API from the uh, state machine workflow. So uh, this task is, uh, yeah, this is a, this is a, uh, this state is a task and you're trying to invoke an API gateway. So that's a resource. Then you have to provide different parameters. So you can provide your API endpoints, your methods, headers, page, path, query string parameters, request body, and of course, operation type. So let's talk about some of the key, um, key configurations over here. The first key configuration is your API endpoint. And of course, and this is mandatory uh, because uh, yeah, you need to provide the URL of the API which you are going to call uh, from the state machine workflow. So this is how the uh, configuration look like. You will have API ID, then include API, your region name, and then of course, uh, Amazon AWS.com. So this is a mandatory field you need to configure in order to uh, call the API. The next mandatory field is which method you're going to uh, uh, call the API. So when you're calling the API, I mean, generally uh, your, your APIs will have method as well and, uh, and they have, uh, you know, they have like get, post, put, delete kind of method. So same method you need to provide here as well that, okay, if you're calling the API, are, we, are, are you going to, uh, make a uh, like a, a, a URL call using get, or are you going to post or put some data, or you want to perform a delete operation? So you need to provide your uh, method over here. What method you are going to operate on your API? And this is also a mandatory field. Now third, which is not so mandatory because you can simply say, okay, no auth, but uh, what operation type? Uh, what authorization type you are going to um, uh, configure. And here you have a choice to say no auth, that means 
my API is anonymous and it takes uh, no authorization whatsoever. Or you can also use role-based authorization or resource policy-based authorization. So you can configure it. So use either role or resource policy or uh, in case of anonymous API, you can simply say no auth. So these three are very important uh, uh, fields or, or parameters to configure when calling the API. Then you, of course, you can use headers to pass uh, the headers information as a key value. Uh, you can also provide the stage detail uh, if your API is, is, is deployed across multiple stages. Then you can tell, uh, yeah, this is a dev stage call, a test 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 call, a production stage call. You can configure that. You can also qualify the uh, path over here. Uh, you can pass query string parameter. If your API takes uh, parameters using query string, you can pass that as well. Uh, and, and finally, if you want to uh, you know, post the data, then of course you can use a JSON document inside your request body to send data as well. So these are the other things you, which you can configure, but your API endpoint method and uh, authorization type are the three important uh, parameters you must configure if you are calling your API. So when you are uh, configuring the parameters, not everything yeah, you need to hard code. So uh, in this example, I mean, you saw that, I mean, yeah, things are very much hard coded. But you don't need to hard code thing. You can you can do parameterization. So like the example I show over here, that you know, we are passing some parameters to step function, uh, and uh, uh, like yeah, you have, I mean the state machine workflow, and then you can simply extract your data from there. So this is an example where I'm where we are passing request body and space as parameters, uh, like as, as a parameter from the. Uh, from the parameter passed to the state machine workflow. Uh, but eventually anything you see here, all the way from resources to your methods, to your authentication type, uh, or, or even API endpoint, everything can be configured uh, and uh, to, to, everything can be parameterized. That means you don't need to hard code it into the into your state, state uh, uh, configuration. Uh, you can simply pass that as a parameter. Okay, so having uh, said that, uh, let's see what we are going to build. So I, I told you this is going to be a very small topic, but interesting one because you, you I mean, there has always been a requirement to call APIs from um, APIs from um, uh, step function, and people have been using uh, intermediate tools like uh, like uh, you know, Lambda to you know, make call to Lambda, and then Lambda will call API. <clears throat> you don't need to do it anymore, you can make a direct call to the API. So what we are going to do in this case is that we will create a state machine workflow uh, into your step function, which will, which will make call to API gateway. API gateway will have an API, which will simply forward the call to a Lambda function. And Lambda function uh, has a very simple business logic. It simply writes that data into a CloudWatch log and returns back the success message which will come all the way back to the step function. So this is what we are going to build today to demonstrate how you can call uh, an API inside a step function state machine workflow. In order to do this exercise, we have created a exercise and published to a website, aws dojocom This is the URL of that exercise. Uh, I have also provided this URL in the description box uh, below. Uh, and uh, I'm going to walk you through the steps involved in creating this exercise and post that. Yeah, you can run this exercise anytime you want. Uh, you need to simply follow the uh, follow the instructions and you will be able to implement the scenario with just this one. So let's jump to the exercise. So here is our website, aws dojocom where this uh, exercise has been uh, published. And these are the steps involved uh, to create the to create the uh, scenario. So uh, step one is pretty straightforward. We need to have an AWS account. Uh, and if you don't have an AWS account, then you might want to create that using this link over here. Then we create a, a Lambda function. So we go to the, yeah, we log into AWS console and then um, we create a function and we are creating a very simple function. So we're calling it the Dojo Lambda function. 
in Python 3.a and then simply create a new role using basic Lambda permissions. Uh, you create the function and once the function is created, uh, yeah, you simply change the code over there. And I'm making it very simple. I'm saying that um, when the parameter is passed to the Lambda function from API Gateway, um, uh, simply uh, log that into CloudWatch log and then return back a structured message saying that, hey, yeah, yeah, I got a call from the step function and that worked. Yeah, simple. So because again, the purpose is to show that how you can call API from a state machine workflow. So you uh, update this uh, Lambda function with uh, with the code change. And after that, you configure your API. So you go to API Gateway uh, and they say, I want to configure a REST API. Uh, and then you say, I want to create a new API, give it a name called Dojo API. Uh, then uh, API is created. Then I'm simply creating a method over here. And that, uh, that method is a, is a post method, a post type method. And I'm saying in that post type method, I want to call a Lambda function. And this is the name of the Lambda function. So all I'm saying is that I'm creating an API, which will um, yeah, which will simply uh, call, uh, and, you know, call, work as a proxy and will simply call a Lambda function. Then uh, it will ask, okay, I want, we say, I want to change the, you know, the, the gateway permission policy to give it uh, institution permission to the Lambda function. You simply say, yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, so that with that, your API is created. I mean, your method is configured. Uh, once your method is configured, then you say, I want to deploy my API. And in this case, you can say, okay, which stage you want to deploy. And in this example, you say, we want to deploy to a new stage called prod. Uh, and then we simply click on deploy. And this will deploy the API. And once you deploy the API, API you have to make note of, remember, uh, we have to provide this API URL. Uh, in the step function uh, configuration, uh, when you create that task state for uh, calling the API. So you need to make note of your API ID, then institute API, then your reason, uh, and then your Amazon uh, AWS.com. Okay, so you have to make note of uh, this part. So copy this part, and then you move to the next step where you configure and run the workflow and step function. So you go to then you go to the step functions and say I want to create a new state machine workflow, uh, and say I want to you know, author with a code snippet. At least it generates a code code snippet for you, but I simply delete it and write everything from the scratch. And now uh, we select um, we are, now step function has two type of step function. One is standard, which is more for long running, and second is express, which is for short lived function. I will cover express type uh, uh, some other point of time, let's keep focus to the API today. So you select the standard type uh, as of now, uh, and then you simply configure the, uh, uh, configure the, uh, configure the um, state machine workflow. Now I could have used API, but that makes it a little complicated to document. So I said, let's keep it simple. I simply provide you the JSON document which you can use to configure the API, but of course you can, Generate generate this uh, uh, from your uh, generate this from your uh, console UI as well. But again, it's pretty straightforward. I, I mentioned I know as I, I mentioned earlier that you are simply providing the uh, yeah, yeah in this example you are simply saying I'm calling API gateway. My method is uh, is post. Uh, my request body is okay. I will I will have in my in my state machine workflow request parameter will have a data element. I'll simply fetch it from there. I don't need any authorization because my um, my uh, my API was anonymous. This is the API endpoint, okay? And then uh, the stage also we are passing as a parameter. And you can see that I have not added here anything else like header and query string. Those things were optional anyway. And since I'm not configuring it, I'm not putting it over here. I just put only those parameters over here, which were mandatory, which are like, which I need to use. Like I mean, few are mandatory, but other like your request body and a method and uh, sorry, request body and auth and then your stage, all those things I added because I need it for my call. So you simply uh, save your API and of course, uh, yeah, you have to update this API endpoint based on what API endpoint you get in your deployment. And your simple workflow looks like this. Simple enough. So now what you do is that, um, yeah, you 
you save this API, uh, this state machine workflow, uh, it will say, okay, uh, what's the name of the uh, state machine? Uh, you give us a nice name. Then you might want to create a new role um, uh, so that uh, the state machine workflow has a permission to make call to the resources. Yeah, and it will create a new role with the required permission on attached to the state machine workflow. And finally, you say that I want to start the execution. Click on the start execution button. When you do so, it will ask you to provide the parameter. Now, you need to provide parameter here because if you go back to configuration, you see that you are getting your data, your payload, yeah, your request body data, and your stage, both are coming through the parameter. So you need to provide a JSON document which has these two elements there. So if you go back to your start execution, you can see that we are providing a JSON document where data is uh, sample input data and stage is production. And remember, the API was deployed to the production stage. So we simply uh, click on start execution. And yeah, uh, you can see the execution has been successful. If you go to your uh, inputs and outputs, you can see what input you passed and what output you got. And output is interesting one because you can see that your Lambda function returned this response body. Yeah, it's status 200 call from step function worked and that Lambda uh, yeah, uh, response came back all came all the way back to the came all the way back to the uh, state machine workflow. Okay. Now, uh, this look, the call has been successful. Uh, if you want to see how your uh, Lambda function has logged the input data into the CloudWatch log, uh, you can open your uh, Dojo Lambda function and go go to see the go to see the go to the monitoring monitoring section and see the CloudWatch log for Lambda function. You can see that your payload payload of uh, sample input data has uh, been passed all the way to the Lambda function. So remember. Uh, your your payload was passed through this uh, data elements sample input data, and that had been passed to your lambda function, and lambda function uh, uh, had a business logic to write it to the CloudWatch log, yeah, just to demonstrate that it has been called. Uh, and that's it. Uh, and our next step is to go and clean up the resources, though, so that you don't uh, incur any cost post the exercise. So that was all for the exercise today, guys, where you learn how you can call API inside uh, AWS Step Function. Uh, AWS Step Function, um, uh, yeah, uh, to to create the the orchestration for your uh, for your business logic. Uh, there are many other similar workshops and exercises uh, which are published through website aws-dojo.com. Each of these exercises and workshops implement uh, scenarios like what we discussed now to learn about AWS services. Um, if you have any feedback, either you can provide us in the YouTube channel comment section, or you can click on the contact, contact us tab here and you can provide feedback here uh, as well. We always look forward to your feedback for improvement and for providing new content. So that's all for our today, guys. Um, I promise to come back again with a new video and a workshop exercise in the coming days. Uh, meanwhile, stay safe and have a nice.